everyone, my name is Mirafora Ioannidou and I'd like to welcome you to Stratford-upon-Avon. Today we are in QRTC and we are going to have a quick look at everything that has to do with Project Swift, from the technology behind it up to running a test ourselves. As you already may know, this project was co-funded by Innovate UK, RSSB and led by Cisco. Now, the reason why Project SWIFT has been talked about so much is because statistics have shown us that 3 million people in the UK commute more than two hours a day. That already is a 72% increase in the last 10 years. Whilst on those trains, 33% of internet requests fail. When we first started working on Project Swift, our goal was to see if we can achieve 100 megabits per second on a train. What we actually managed is 300. Now the amazing thing is everybody wins from the train operator to the staff and even more so the passengers. We are now going to go and have a quick look at our trackside kit. So we're just gonna cross and here we have one of our cabinets. So if we just open it very quickly, you can see where the magic happens. The IE4000 ruggedized ethernet switch. And if we just have a quick look up here, we will find our Solutions Plus Partner Fluid Mesh radios and antennas. They are responsible for providing the high-speed wireless backhaul trackside to train connectivity. We're going to have a quick look at the data center head-end. Now this could be anywhere within the country as long as we have fiber connectivity. So here we have with us Steve Matthews, a solution architect responsible for UK Enterprise and he's going to give us a quick run through as to what is happening in the back end over here. So Steve. Okay, so you've already been on trackside and you've mm -hmm. seen the kit that's trackside. So on the trackside we've got switches and we've got uh, the fluid mesh radios with the high speed connectivity that connect into the train. On the train we've got more fluid mesh radios and we've also got access points. Uh, this is the kind of our test data center where we've developed everything that we're using for the real project. And effectively you can see more IE4000 industrial switches here. This is an aggregation switch from the trackside switches. So all the trackside backhaul comes into this switch over fiber. And then we have overlaid on that, we've got a number of different components. Firstly, the, the trackside radios, the fluid mesh ones, actually are aggregated into a small device here called an FM1000. So all the connectivity, all the high-speed connectivity that comes back from the high-speed connections comes out of this small device here. And then above that we've got a mini data center switch which is, a, which is basically connected to all the applications that we need at the head end. Um, at the head end we've got wireless LAN controller that is here in the rack that's actually controlling the, the radios on the train in flex mode. So the APs on the train that the passengers connect to are connected to that. But everything traverses over the fluid mesh high-speed connectivity to make the whole the whole of SWIFT work correctly. Let's have a quick look at the train and what's inside of it. In this train, we're able to see the kit that is used, such as the TRX S10 switch and the industrial wireless 3702 access point. In each carriage, we would find one of each of these. This is the same solution that will be needed for Halo. This actually is the brain of all the kit that we have seen so far. The TRX R6 router has SIM cards from the mobile network uh, operators. It can also provide us a GPS, so the precise location of the train at all times. And with SD-WAN as well, it is the one that is going to make all the intelligent decision-making process, such as when is it the best time to choose to use station Wi-Fi, the track side network, or mobile network connectivity such as 3G or 4G in order to be able to preserve that great connectivity. 
far as it goes with the outside of the train, we have bi-directional antennas on either end of it. These antennas have been especially designed and positioned to minimize interference and to maximize coverage. The time has now come for us to connect. We're going to send our invitation through our Outlook calendar and we're going to run the call through WebEx. So let's see how it goes. Hey guys, so I'm just joining on a train, so sorry for all the noise. But uh, guys, I've just started the recording so we can play it back afterwards to see how uh, the conference looks like. Uh, but Nisha, where are you joining us from today? Today, I am working from the Cisco office in Italy. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Jess, where are you calling in from? I'm in sunny UK in Bedford Lakes. Awesome. Okay, so does everything look all right from your side? You can hear me and see me okay? Yeah, fantastic. It's really, really good. I'm actually believing on a train. It's great. Awesome. We are now coming to the end of our demonstration video of Halo. This is actually being trialed by Scottish Rail this year between Edinburgh and Glasgow. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.